So shout out to Kyrie. Now that now that we don't we don't had the shout outs going down. Now let's get into this basketball because the NBA season is back. Had a little, we had a we had a small vacation. We had a, just a small, very, very small, and and now we're officially a week into the season now. So we we got a good idea of how some teams look now. Exactly. So why don't we start off with the best? We don't want to get to the worst. Let's start off with the best. Uh, the two best records in the, in, in the league right now are the Phoenix Suns and the Philadelphia 76ers, both at five and one. Both of those teams had some big additions this season. Uh, obviously, you guys know Chris Paul is, is, is with the Suns right now. And then for Philly, I think their biggest addition was actually – on the administrative side, bringing in Doc Rivers, bringing in Daryl Morey. Um, I think those were their two biggest additions right there. I know they obviously they made a couple of, of uh, smaller moves to, to tweak the roster, but I think for them, I think their biggest move was actually bringing in Doc Rivers, who's a championship uh, head coach, has a lot of experience working with superstars and superstar egos. Um, and then Daryl Morey, you know, who's been in this league as a GM a very long time. Um, but, you know, from the start of the season, it's looking like, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely working out because, again, they're both five and one best records in basketball in, in the East and the West, respectively. Now, how long this holds up, I can't say. But to start the season off, both these teams are playing some really good basketball. Absolutely. I think the, the biggest addition um, with those guys, as you said, Chris Paul and then on the coaching side for Philly, has just been the confidence. I look at Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid, I, I felt, is one of the top 10 players in the league for quite some time, and now he's actually playing with that type of confidence. And he came in with that mindset this year that I'm going to show you why I'm an MVP caliber player. And on the flip side, Chris Paul with a young Phoenix team that showed a little bit of something last year, you know, at the bubble when they went 8-0, and and they showed, like, look, there's some talent if we can just get this clicking. And I'm, I'm very happy for Monty Williams as a coach there because I like Monty Williams. And so now that he has the pieces there, um, it's all clicking. Chris Paul is, is, is really giving these guys the confidence because all you got to do is get to your spot. I'll get you the ball. Just get to your spot, be ready to knock down that shot, be ready to finish that layup, and it's showing. So I, I like what both those teams are doing. Um, obviously, we know Phoenix still has to deal with that juggernaut out west, and that'll be the true test of, of how good they really are. But for them to have the start they have now after the way they finish in the bubble, it's, it's a good sign. That's a fact. And I want to go back to because you brought up uh, Monty Williams and how great of a coach he is. And I um, and I thought that he was a great coach. Um, I watched on they had on the uh, NBA Network. This was got to be maybe what was that? When, when he was coaching New Orleans, got to be at least six, seven years ago when he uh, was. Uh, he yeah he had the job then back then yes it was, yeah so and I'm and I'm so I'm watching in this they, you know they had practice and they had a relatively young team at the time so during I guess like one of the, the huddles and whatnot they would he was talking to the players uh, about financial security and being mindful of 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 the people that are around you and whatnot and I don't know if every coach has those conversations with their players, but I really respected the fact that he had those conversations and that made me actually like him even more as a coach, because, you know, listen, at the end of the day, that's not my job to tell you how to live your life off the court. My job is to get wins on the court. You know what I mean? So for him to take the time and, and understand that he's dealing with young men, but more so young black men, um, you know what I'm saying? And take the time out to, to, to speak to them about those things. I thought that was an amazing thing. And for me, that, that pushed him way up as far as, as coaches go, because not only is he teaching them on the court, but he's teaching them about life and how to sustain the, 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 the living that you're, that you're being afforded right now by playing in the NBA and making millions of dollars. But you also have to be smart with that money. We've all seen 30 for 30 broke uh, at this mm -hmm. point. You know what I mean? Or we, or we know, and we know the numbers of how many athletes go broke after they retire from this sport. So I just wanted to shout him out um, on that. You know, just because since you brought him up, I thought that was a, you know, I thought he, he that was a great thing that he did. Yeah, he, he's he's well liked and well respected throughout the league. I've heard Greg Popovich say, you know, great things about Monty, and um, I, I think it was I, I want to say maybe within the last four to five years, maybe it was a little sooner than that, but I think it was in that time frame where he had lost his wife. Yes. And I remember I remember hearing the players, um, you know, the way they spoke of him and his wife and, and just him as a man, the way they spoke about him. And that goes to your point of 
you know, he, he really takes a hands-on approach with his players where we know at the end of the day, this is a business, but he treats his players as young, young men who are part of his family. He wants to mold you and help you along the way. So I'm, I'm happy to see the success they're having. I hope it continues. And I hope also many people realize, you know, he is a really good head coach. You know, he, he's never had a juggernaut team, but for him to be competitive year in, year out, and we talked about it before, coaches that get the most out of, those, out of their guys, those are the truly great coaches. Yes. Because those are the guys that can find just a small, a small glimmer of talent that you have and maximize that talent. Absolutely. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned into Real Fans, Real Talk. Uh huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real 